Holiday greetings everyone. So it seems like another year has passed us by and time has flown by for me just doing all these videos. Uh, so this is basically my year end uh, roundup here of good and bad models and some other things. We're going to start off here some other toys. So I'm just going to talk about these because you may have noticed I've shifted a lot of my content to other things besides cars. I don't know if it's because I'm bored of cars or it's because I'm always noticing quality problems. <laughs> it's just... Anyways, let's, uh, let's just introduce these uh, nice and quick. So Sticky Monster Lab, I have a whole bunch of these. They are so basic that I like them. They're the complete opposite of a 164 scale resin car. Like, but there's something charming about them. It's a, this is a dog commuting on a subway reading a newspaper. It's just strange stuff that comes out there. So there's a few videos on Sticky Monster Lab uh, characters. Um, I haven't introduced this one, but I will highly recommend you watch a TV show called Attack on Titan. It's a anime, but it's not for kids at all. It's definitely an adult storyline. I think it's better than Lord of the Rings. If this thing became a live action movie by a, a major studio, I think it would beat Lord of the Rings. And I read all those books as a kid. So you can watch this free on BillyBilly.tv. Uh, that's how I found it. So there's, there's some reviews of this coming up later. Ah, Converge by Bandai. Bandai makes Gundam robots mostly, but these are little vinyl PVC figures. Here's the one of uh, Virtual On, which is a video game. And look at the paint apps on this thing. It has a clear lens up here. I think the body might be, the head might be clear plastic, but look at all the details molded in this thing and then the paint applied on top of that mold. So, yeah, this toy was probably $6 when it was new. You cannot get a 164 scale car with this much work in it. You just can't for 6 bucks. It just it's a different creature entirely. And then if you like if you're a hobbyist, you can modify and you know, spruce them up. I put some like jewels and painted paint details on this one. And Gundam, this is a Gundam. This is from Virtual On. That whole universe is so wacky with all the crazy robots. Just look at this thing. It is like a strange tricycle tank thing. So I like the designs that uh, Bandai comes up with for uh, the Gundam franchise. Alright. Uh, if you want to get into some serious hobby grade stuff, this is a 1 200 scale diecast tractor. And uh, you can just search the channel for the playlist of 1 200. Flanking it are some other aircraft carrier tugs and look at the little people I mean this is a true hobby scale 1-200 one, one 164 is still a toy scale I think it's so, slowly changing but as long as Hot Wheels exist it'll probably always be a toy scale because a lot of companies try to do slightly better than Hot Wheels uh, anyways this is magnificent This is one 200 scale as well, it's by X-Car Toys. Uh, this is a really a relatively inexpensive toy slash model. It, it's like one, it's a fraction of the cost of a nut, like a true hobby brand like Herpa or Hogan. So I really like X-Car Toys because minus the landing gear, this is pretty, this is just as good as a Herpa or Hogan. If it had landing gear, it would be as good. But again, it's a fraction of the cost, so... Yeah, X-Car Toys, they make, they make good stuff, you know, not just, not just cars. This is straight up a toy, obviously. It's a pullback car, it's all plastic, but look at the details of this thing. It has a separate cr crash hood, and it has fully painted f characters inside of it. So I reviewed this, it's from Usovich, which is a show about some Russian rabbits and their crazy adventures. You might want to watch those. They're free on YouTube to watch. They're only 30 second videos. 
so really easy to digest. And this thing has clear headlights and stuff, clear tail <coughs> tail lights, all these molded details. So really neat stuff here. And the last one is Votoms. So I just found a few of these locally for cheap. And I figured why not? I like mechas, robots and stuff. But these things made by Takara Tomy are probably the most detailed small figures I've ever seen in my life. This thing will transform into like a landing mode. And there's just so much articulation in something so small. It's nuts. It's, it's really crazy. So... Yeah, I have a whole lot of Votoms videos already and many more to come. So that is it for the alternates. So next we're going to talk about some of the duds, some of the letdowns this year. Alright, so I didn't buy too many models this year. Uh, so I'm, that's why I'm combining all, most of these into one video. So these are the letdowns. I don't have too many. Uh, but this is by Kyosho. It's a MUTT uh, Mutt uh, Jeep-like vehicle, and the vehic the casting itself it looks nice and all. It's just it's like 157 scale, which is not remotely close to 164, which was quite a surprise because most Kyoshos do look like they're 164. What really lets me down about this sizing is Kyosho is not afraid to make small models. So here's a Kyosho of this little BMW Isetta, right? So a brand that's fully capable of making something small into scale, I don't know what happened with this one. It's just a really strange design choice that they made to just put out something that looks huge, right? If it was Hot Wheels, sure, I'd understand. But again, Kyosho is just a weird choice. Okay. So the next one, Mini GT is one of my favorite brands still. I would say NO64 and Mini GT are my favorite brands. <coughs> you know, beyond the resins. Resins aren't really a brand because they're mostly fly-by-night operations. But this one, this Cento GHG, this exhaust tip cannot be fixed because there's no metal there. And so it's, it's a letdown. It's an indication that this brand is growing too fast and not keeping on top of their quality control. Other commenters have, have mentioned that they've gotten three bad Mini GTs in a row. Uh, most of mine, you know, they have some, they, you know, my bad ones aren't really that bad in the grand scheme of things. And because you can open them, you can fix problems as well. But this one I can never fix. I wrote an email to Mini GT, it went unanswered, so that's again another problem of a company that has too many customers and is selling too much stuff. Granted these are not expensive models so I guess they can continue doing what they're doing but just a warning to you guys if you're new to the you know collecting 164 scale vehicles. The favorite brand I like to rag on is TLV and the reason why is these guys live in a time machine. They do not update their molds, they do not improve their products. Once they make a casting, they just release that for the next 20 years. But the world has progressed, and so this Mazda Luz Legato has the lamest wheels. They don't look at all. <laughs> those, those look like Hot Wheels wheels, you know? But the main problem with this one is, this doesn't look like the real car and no one's I couldn't find any image, images of a loose legato that looks like this and uh, no one else has been able to comment about it maybe it does exist but even if it does a car that looks like this exists you cannot get past the lame wheels and uh, very often they skip a lot of details like there's no license plates so I had to add my own this one has painted tail lights for, <clears throat> for the price range these guys are at, they should update and put out clear taillights, but they don't do it. And then you can't modify TLVs easily because they're all press fit together. So you'll see this one is from 2009. So back in 2009, maybe this is acceptable, but the hobby has moved on. And unlike other brands, like Greenlight seems to update their stuff. They'll re-release new molds and update their, their stuff, but... This brand doesn't seem to do it. They're just not into it. It's just not their way. 
don't get me wrong, I, I still will collect them because they do make these random vehicles that no one else will touch. So, okay, that's that one. Only two more to go. Now, Shuko. Shuko makes die-cast cars, and they, they're all right. They're a little overpriced, I think. But this is a resin model by them. Uh, they released three of them, and I bought the two cars. And this one, it's just... It was so poorly designed. The wheels are bigger than the wheel wells. I mean, the tires. So that was a big issue. It came in a non-conventional base, so I switched it over to a Liberty Walk base. I mean, a uh, Inno 64 base, so it can stack up with my other ones. But yeah, the axles I think may have been too wide. You want to just look up the review of this thing. And for the price of this model, it should have been perfect, but it was not remotely close. I think I mentioned the review, it's almost as if I designed this and tried to sell this, you know, but I'm not a professional model making company, you know, it's just Shuko, they should have done better, they really should have, and then the quality of this thing, the, the blemish and the paint right there in the front, I mean there's a chunk missing, that looks like a Hot Wheels casting, yeah, it's a chunk missing, so yeah, Shuko resins, I would avoid that like the plague. I'm done with that. those guys. Alright. The very last one now is this resin model. And it's made by ART. I think this might be one of those fly-by-night operations. Of the, this is the Bugatti Chiron. This thing has a backwards brake rotor that can never be fixed. And it was missing a headlight cover. I had to take some packaging plastic and finally shape one. And carefully glue it in there. And uh, yeah... Yeah, for the price of this thing, again, I expect perfection because for the price of this, they could have made it three, four times, you know, compared to like a, a different, to, to a more normal model, like an Inno 64. I will say the paint is really nice, and now that it's generally fixed except for that brake rotor, yeah, it's okay. Alright, so that's it for the the failures or big letdowns this year. Let's get a little more positive and see what, what I did like. So for the small viewership that likes tuned vehicles, we gotta talk about this because I do like them quite a bit. I seem to like them actually more than the realistic looking ones because I know it's hard to actually design this versus a normal car. This is the Hot Wheels Batmobile. So I think it converts pretty well to a cartoon car. Uh, this is a Bling series by uh, Hot Wheels. This is a Lotus Esprit. These are 3D printed wheels, so uh, they're not really stock, but I like the deformation that Hot Wheels did on these. And then the standard is Choro Q. Here's a Choro Q Zero of a Super Z from some old wacky Japanese TV show called Seibu Keisatsu. And then uh, Choro Q also had this old, weather, old garage series. So here's a Ford GT40 that's all weathered and like a barn find so I think that's pretty neat even the tires look old so it's pretty cool uh, actually well I guess we could try to fit at least this now we get into the resin models this is a uh, little egg RWB Royal Ocean and although I may not like decals these decals are well done and this thing literally has an interior yeah, so it's pretty crazy to have a, a miniature deformed interior. Yeah, I'm gonna have to lose these. I got two more to go. And then this one also is pretty cool. This is an AMG GT3, I think. And again, it has a an interior and just a crazy wide body, you know, like over fendering wide body LMP kind of kind of body kit on it so and the last one for you F1 fans people aren't afraid to deform F1 cars this was by YM model by the way this uh, AMG this one here is my mini racing so it's a much bigger scale but I don't really have many, many choices in getting uh, painted models of deformed F1 cars. Like you can see, with these resin models, they have just as many details as the realistic resin models. Little 
photo at 10 10 a and uh, the logos foil sticker logos here's a little tow hook uh, so yeah I, I really like these things unfortunately there aren't many they don't they simply don't come out with many because this is a very small niche of uh, the hobby so I, I can understand okay well let's get to the realistic stuff that you've all been waiting for Starting off the show, we got the Hot Wheels Jamera. I think it's uh, pretty good for the price. I 3D printed my own wheels, but yeah. Same with this one, 3D printed wheels. This is the Lambo FKP37, I think it was called, the Cyan there. And I like this has a matte finish on it, so it's pretty cool. And then this one goes out to Die Castrum, because Die Castrum loves these zingers by uh, Johnny Lightning. And I like the Kingswood, uh, which is this car, and then I guess it's just a crazy Kingswood uh, zinger there. So that's the Johnny Lightning there. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I like weird, wacky things. Uh, green light for the price. This Gypsy Rose they put out in their Lowrider series. I think it's nice. I mean, the the graphics on it are really impressive. Again, factoring the the price. Naturally, I don't like the headlights, how they're just stark white. It would be nice if they actually printed on details like Hot Wheels does, but... Oh well. <clears throat> and then Shuko is back, but on the plus side. So, we got this Mark I Golf rally car. And it's an okay casting. They got the whole, you know, six clear headlights is a fantastic feature. The clear taillights also a fantastic feature. The, the rally badge and the license plate, all that stuff. But what really makes it nice is the ability to add the Marlboro Burrow stickers. Not stickers, they're decals, water slide decals. It doesn't come with the Marlboro sponsorship for <clears throat> kids, kids' safety, I guess, but you can make it look like the real rally car. So kudos to Shuko on that one. I can't really have something without mentioning Kyosho on the plus side because ma the majority of cars in my collection probably still is Kyosho. And so that's a M1 Group 5 racer. Sorry, I had to cough there. So, typical Kyosho stuff. You, you, you have uh, clear headlights and taillights usually, not all the time. But usually you have a black interior and usually you have mirrors. So, I, I, I like Kyosho. Let me clear this tray out. I like limousines. Thanks to uh, Twice Diecast, I think you're the one that got me into limos. So M2 Machines had this whole line of hot rod limousines. And uh, this is a Cadillac. But unfortunately M2 Machines, and many of them, have opening features. So you saw that door was just loose. But still, where else can you get a hot rodded limousine? So. Uh, I kind of wish that they would continue making those. You know, there are many other you know, old classic cars that could become limousines. Preferably they do it without the opening panels, but oh well. Okay, so I used to have a... I used to have that. I used to have a red... I bought a red 1993 Miata and later converted it into metallic orange and roll cage and turbocharged and all that stuff. So that one is by Mini GT. Uh, a lot of brands are making Miatas, but Mini GT was smart enough to make two different molds. This mold has the headlights in the down position. They have a different one with the lights in the up position. Hobby Japan has the same mold for both you know, appearances, and you can see the panel gaps and the lights down, so that's why I don't really like that one. So I prefer the Mini GT one. Still has clear uh, turn signals and taillights, and the rubbery mirrors are great. So, that's a more of a personal reason why I like that one. But here's another Mini GT, and this is more for technical reasons. This is such a well-designed car model. The way they constructed the rear end to actually have air passing through that passageway. It's really impressive. Uh, I 3D print my own brakes. Uh, but yeah, the only thing I wish that this brand would do is tell you what the car is you're holding in your hand. I don't know why they choose to just leave all that blank. It's very strange. 
but uh, again, rubbery mirrors are great. The bases are screwed together so you can, you know, repaint the interiors, which I often do. And so that's why Mini DT is still one of my favorite brands. Uh, for the price, they really can't be beat. Okay, so now we have a Sparky model. And uh, again, tobacco livery. This time I didn't even have to add this decal. It was already there. The skull dip dip uh, tobacco stuff. And then it's hard to fault the Porsche uh, LMP car. It came in third place in 1984, apparently. Alright, so that's those guys there. I'm going to clear this out because all the other ones are on those little plastic bases. I mentioned in 064 because this is this is the exact reason. This is a Celica 1600 GT and it has fantastic details. It actually looks like a car that's, that lives in the country I reside in. But you'll notice it actually has fender mirrors and you know just a lot of details. Even though I don't like the uh, defroster lines on the rear, you can still see into the interior of this guy. So they're thin enough. So very nice. Okay. This next one is by DCM. It's a Rolls-Royce Phantom 6. There aren't enough really nice classic cars. Uh, of royal heritage, I guess. <laughs> I kind of wish like more more of these classic Rolls Royces came out. So I'm really happy that DCM went through the effort to make this. And for, you know, like other premium models, this one has all those features. Uh, the mirrors, the, f the flying lady up front, the clear headlights and taillights, license plate stuff, a lot of interior paint details. Uh, so, yeah, in particular, this two-tone paint job is fantastic as well. You know, the separation of the silver top and the sky blue is pretty good, pretty impressive. I, I couldn't do it. All right, so it's nice. You can just see the massiveness of it as well. And then relatively recently, we did this uh, Mitsubishi Delica by Autobots. And uh, I think the Autobots is a fly-by-night operation. They might not be around. Same with DCM in the future. But they did a fantastic job on this guy. Uh, a lot of good value going on. It looks like a real car from a, a magazine article. So it's well done. And the last one for this tray is an ignition model die cast of the A90 Pandem bodied Supra. GR Supra there, whatever. And yeah, this one has a fantastic paint job. You can unscrew it and I repainted the interior. Uh, the, the lights, again, they're transparent. This one also has a brake system. Not all many, not all ignitions come with brakes, which is really strange for such an expensive brand. But this one does have brakes, so yeah, it's very nice. Let's get one more uh, tray spinning. Well, let me show you the top view, of, just to show that Rolls Royce again. Look how big it is. Alright guys, we only have three resins here, the best of the best. And sadly it's because there really aren't that many releases of resins. Um, because they're simply very difficult to make. If you actually counted how many parts go into these things, it's a lot of work. I, I would have a hard time making one of these myself. It would take 50 hours at least for me to assemble something like this probably. To paint it, I'd probably have to paint it 20 times to get it right. Anyways, this is a 300 SL, and this is made by a company called MY64. It is quite fantastic. Uh, you want to watch a review of this one. Just all the parts on this thing is just crazy, really. Uh, so, very nice paint job as well. And this one, I, I think MY64 actually looks at real cars. So this one in the real world has no side mirrors. But they have other models of the 300 SL with side mirrors. Because again, they're mimicking real cars in the real world, it seems. So very impressive. I think it, actually, it has a real wooden base as well that matters to you. Uh, so this next one is also by MY64. And this is the Akega Retro. So it's like a retro looking Porsche built on a more modern Porsche. So, and again, tons of details, not only on the outside, but the interior as well. 
it's just it's over the top so fantastic okay so then the last one is an ignition model resin and this is of the Hakosuka skyline so it's nice it actually has licensed Hayashi racing wheels on it and uh, I just like the Hakosuka skyline I think it's probably the coolest skyline in history so okay so that's it for the uh, the finest models you can buy on 164 and I don't think there are any major problems with these three either as far as quality control So if you happen to be new to collecting, I will throw in a few bits of advice uh, or warnings really. That first warning would be, be prepared to be disappointed. Uh, a lot of models, they're not going to be perfect. They have, you know, minor blemishes in the paint or maybe the, the lights are not inserted properly or the badges aren't aligned properly. That's just the way it goes. I mean, if you look how small these things are, it's understandable to me why this happens because I, I've built model kits in, in reality. If you've never built a model kit, you really have no comprehension how difficult it is to make something like this, which is why the prices for me are fully justified. Um, but if you uh, also factor in, you know, inexpensive models like like the green light, I mean, even making this would be really difficult to do to try to apply these uh, graphics so so well so it's, it's whether you're spending a little or a lot it's uh, quite amazing I think in general what uh, these companies are able to do but if you expect things to look perfect this hobby might not be for you that's why I showed you those other things at the very start of the video are these worth the money? I don't know. These are definitely luxury goods. You don't need to have miniature cars or, or those other toys to survive. So uh, re reasoning and rationality I don't think really play much of a, a part here in this in the hobby. Okay, well, that's it for this year. Um, I'll continue to get some more 164s, but yeah, it's dwindling, you know, because most of my backfill is already filled in. And it's just a matter of companies putting out new castings that I want to have. And uh, that doesn't seem to happen as often as it did the first year I started collecting. But uh, that's just the way it is. So hopefully you can at least enjoy uh, some of the other topics I cover. And if not, obviously there's tons of other channels covering 164 scale vehicles. And I have a whole subscription list you want to check out. I'm also going to throw out a little credit to uh, Zelda Racing. Uh, Zelda Racing... Uh, is always commenting on my videos so I appreciate that and uh, he has thousands of followers so you might want to look up his channel as well he has content that you might enjoy or she I'm not sure if it's a he or she thank you for this watching this year and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next year as well